Do you want an SNES classic? Great, now I have your attention, here's how you can get one. In the description below is a link to a competition on behalf of the Pixel Empire, the awesome site where all of my official merchandise and hundreds of amazing gaming wall prints and phone cases are. To enter this competition held by them, all you need to do is go to the link below in the description and by doing any number of the tasks you see on screen, you can enter the draw the amount of times it says next to the task. So you can subscribe to my channel, sign up to the Pixel Empire newsletter, or even buy something from the site and get more chances to enter the competition and more chances to win. And if you do decide to buy something, well don't forget you can save a bit of money with the discount code CADDY on check out for an extra 15% off. Gotta be quick though, the competition doesn't last very long. Yeah, 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 I know what you're thinking, but Silent Hill isn't a Christmas game, Caddy. You're such a... Nipple! Well, no, you're wrong. Boom! Look, it's snowing. There's snow. It's Christmas. Finn. It's not Ash. Shut up. That's in the movie. Do you know what else is in the movie? Pyramid Head. He's not in the first Silent Hill, is he? No, so it's snow. By the way, here's proof. And it's snowing out. Case closed! Merry Chrissy and a happy glue gun! <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kenneker Show, where I always have to do the duty to deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And yeah, who says that Christmas can't be spooky? Yeah, in my world, Santa doesn't come to your house and delivers presents under your tree. His anagrammed cousin, Satan Lucas, sells off your beloved franchises to big corporations and turns them into this. Okay, yeah, enough of that shit. It's been a year too many that I've neglected to talk about Silent Hill on this channel, and there's a good reason for that. It's the same reason it took me ages to get to Toy Story 2, Medieval, Parappa the Rapper, and Ape Escape when I am the PS1 guy, and my channel was around for a while when those videos went up. If they're such classics, why didn't I do them much earlier? Well, you know what? Sometimes for a game as special as Silent Hill, I just need to be in the right mindset to talk about it, because I'm sure you all don't want a half assed video. That's all it is. Especially when it's about something as culturally significant to the survival horror genre as Silent Frigging Hill. I guess I could compare this video's creation to the situation experienced by the developers of Silent Hill, Team Silent. A group of developers split off from most of Konami who nearly left the company because they were never allowed to express themselves and use their own creative freedom with the games that they made, so everything that Konami made them make for the sake of making them failed miserably. Okay, it's not 100% the same situation, but I can relate to the feeling at least, especially when they were asked to create something specifically to compete with Resident Evil and emulate cheap Hollywood horror of the 90s, but after much back and forth they blatantly told everybody that they wanted to do their own thing. I mean, I remember being told not to do Kadikarus episodes like this at school because it wouldn't work and I should do something more universally appealing, and what did that lead to? Hey dog, what you doing on the windowsill? Yup! Konami had absolutely no faith in Silent Hill working the second the idea came forward of a game being created to tickle player emotions rather than jumpy reflexes and high sales numbers for the business, so it seemed as though those allegations against the company nowadays weren't so different back in the late 90s. And now, nearly 20 years later, the original Silent Hill on PS1 still holds the world in its grip of originality and the impact this game had on the horror industry is still shaking today. Which I can only applaud Team Silent for, even though the franchise has been known to go quite silent downhill sometimes. And don't even get me started on the fucking Revelation movie. <laughs> Before I get into the good stuff though, can I just bring up one thing? The European box art is simple yet distorted. It's eerie and resonates this fear of the unknown. The title font is a little bit off. This face is like the darkness itself is wearing a mask. It's an awesome cover which symbolises what the game is like perfectly while still being ambiguous and unsettling. So what the fuck is going on with the US box art? I mean, it's a little bit creepy, I guess, but all they've done is taken the main character and inverted his face, thrown other random faces in there, merged them into the snow with a house lit up with a little girl underneath it, and made the text red because red is the colour of blood and blood is icky. It's a total mess, this cover, and if Konami thought that this would be more appealing to Americans than this, then if I were American, I'd be massively offended. Anyway, back on point. Let's all gather round, sink deep into the back of the sofa, wrap ourselves in blankets like a burrito made of human flesh and organs, and enjoy one of the creepiest and most atmospheric PS1 intros of all time. This intro makes me feel freezing cold. It makes me feel empty and alone. The music, the choppy 3D modelled FMV that I'd usually hate but works wonders here for the otherworldly atmosphere, and the brief flashes of things to come stitched into the introduction of the story, it's one of the greatest horror game openings of all time, which carries on into the gameplay itself to create one of the greatest horror game beginnings of all time. Once we start the game, we see Harry Mason, our main character, waking up from his car wreckage after he narrowly avoided a strange child on the highway in the intro. Intro, but his adopted daughter, Cheryl, is missing. 
and their initially peaceful family holiday to the resort town of Silent Hill is only going to get worse from here. However, if you work at IGN, that's not how the story goes. So tell us, oh mighty old and wise IGN, what's the story of Silent Hill? Silent Hill was keeping the nightmare of mansion crawling alive, sending poor Harry Mason into a scary house after his missing sister. Oh, you... Fuck. Immediately we're in the town of Silent Hill, lost, isolated, and surrounded by terrible PS1 draw distance, but don't worry, this limitation is used to great effect for the game because this is actually fog that obstructs absolutely everything outdoors, and it works with the uneasy atmosphere of the game brilliantly. It gives Silent Hill its identity, and it would continue to use this theme in the future games. A shrouded, secretive world hiding many abhorrent things right in front of your face that you may not even notice. Currently, we're following a young girl we saw that looked like Cheryl, who then takes us to a deserted alley way behind some garages. The camera angle swoops in and around you for extra sense of disorientation and then you slowly start transitioning to some strange hellish dimension that you had no indication was going to be here. There's abandoned body bags on tables, the mangled fleshy corpse of a dog, a siren getting slowly louder and louder as it suddenly gets incredibly dark leaving you to fend for yourself with a tiny match and then... What is this? Uh, honestly I don't know. Sorry PS1, I know that you're trying but... What the fuck is that supposed to be? Then you're attacked by creatures with knives with no way to fight back or run away now that the doors have been locked behind you. So you die, wake up in another location, in the daylight, and you're left questioning what the hell even happened or even if it was real. Followed by a quick chat from another sane human, Sybil Bennett, and then an ambush from a demonic monster with wings that kind of looks like something I found in my KFC bargain bucket one time. And that, that is the original Silent Hill. The entire beginning of this game is how it feels from this point onwards. A strange sequence of unknown and unexplainable events that you don't even know are real or not. And of course leaving you quite uncomfortable. This game excels in that design choice and the intro to the game couldn't have portrayed it in a better way. Silent Hill may be trippy and psychological, but it's also a survival horror game at its core. It's not just a ghost train of scripted events that you can't control. You move around in a classic tank style, with every move you make being relative to Harry's position, meaning that if he's facing the camera, he's still facing forward, so hitting up on the D-pad still makes him walk towards the camera. And personally, I never have a problem with this control style. It makes perfect sense to me personally, and it also gave birth to the greatest backstep in video game history. Yep. And if you mix it up with the snow around you, this elegant prancing is very reminiscent of an ice skating routine. Anyway, you use tank controls to navigate the town of Silent Hill along with the buildings within it to try and find your missing daughter. And by using maps that you find around the place to jot down notes for puzzles, show locked doors and use to head towards the next place of interest, you need to be extremely careful with using ammo only when you need to, get into fights only when you need to, and use health as little as possible because there are not that many chances to do that in the entire game. It really succeeds in making you feel helpless and in a huge place against huge odds, especially once the monsters start making themselves known lurking around in the fog, and the fact that you're just an everyman with no combat ability and a funny auto-aim just aids in making you feel more oppressed. Unfortunately though, for as big as it is, Silent Hill itself is not built in the same way Resident Evil or something like that is, at least not for a lot of it during these town segments. Learning your environment and needing to remember shortcuts and backtracking routes to solve puzzles is never utilised, and exploration is seriously not needed at all, seeing as you can just run around every enemy to save tons and tons and tons of ammo. And you can ignore most major places of interest because they don't have anything in them, making the outdoor parts rather, well, atmospheric and iconic, yes, but ultimately not that great to play or even that much survival horror. There's a lot of one-stop linear progression in these parts as well for such an open area with no choices on where to explore like in Resi 1, and there's barely any multiple choices to juggle between. In these parts, you have to head for one place, find an important item that tells you to go to another place, try to get there and find out the route is blocked, so find a note telling you to go to another place, and then you go there only to read that it might be a doghouse, but you're not that sure because there's no dog anywhere except for that dog right there and another dog! And so during all of these parts, the running around gets tedious with nothing going on, countless dead ends you need to find new and cryptic ways of getting around and no interesting things to see or do. And to be fair, yes, there are some very important story items hiding in the streets themselves, along with hidden weapons, but if you want to play like me and just dart from one place to the next, you aren't necessarily punished for it. And the fact that inventory management is also not a thing you need to worry about with unlimited slots and unlimited saves also strips away what could have been an interesting experiment in deserted street searching survival horror and just turns it into a fucking bore. Plus all these bits really do is make you realise how bloody ridiculous the running animation is. Stop! Harry time! And this picture here, well, that shit is scarier than anything I've ever seen in Silent Hill. Oh, but what's even scarier than that picture? 
The dialogue. Where are you going? Harry, she isn't fucking moving. My daughter. I've got to find her. Really? Well, let's go then. What was that? I don't know, Harry. Who in the hell was that? You just asked me that. Tell me everything you know. What's going on? Darkness. Though I would be lying if I said the game would be better with decent voice acting, the iffy deliveries and nonsensical gaps in badly written lines add not only a certain charm, but equal unease to the situation that makes Silent Hill feel even more otherworldly. Whether it's intentional or not though, I couldn't tell you. So we've got the Woodman key from here, the Lion key from here, oh I see what you're doing here game, I bet the next key is the Tin Man. Oh, you're one step ahead of me, game! And despite the fact I'm not the biggest fan of the actual Silent Hill street parts, the lack of infantry management and lack of save system from Resident Evil is all made up for, in my opinion, once you reach the school and the true horrific nature of the game unfolds. This is where it begins to get awesome. The tank controls now fight against you in more cramped spaces, making you panic at the smallest enemy, but they're easy enough to avoid once you get your bearings, making it a fair trade-off. You get given riddles and messages written in blood, of course, that describe and detail places you need to visit in order for you to solve puzzles in a certain way in a certain order based on a time that has some kind of relevance to everything but you don't know what yet. Your torch starts making mundane everyday objects twisted and menacing and exploring each corridor and room is halted by the same weird creatures from earlier that when I was younger I used to call knob munchers because look that is exactly what they do they chew on Harry's peenie. And before anybody calls me sick for saying that Yes, I get it. Silent Hill is symbolic. It's supposed to reflect dark, traumatic events and unleash personal demons about the characters that visit it. I understand that. But first of all, I'm not even sure if that's exactly what they had going until Silent Hill 2 happened. And secondly, yes, I guess you can argue that these are supposed to be the students of the school, maybe? But come on. Those are not children. They're clearly fucked up monsters with knives. If I want to call them knob munchers, they're fucking knob munchers. The game not being as mechanically deep as Resident Evil is also made up for in my my opinion with when the game starts teasing you more with the kind of spooks it will present to you once you reach this part of the game. It started off relatively tame at the beginning but now starts getting a lot weirder. Immediately apparent with your radio going nuts whenever an enemy that you can't see is close to you, which some could argue ruins the surprise of seeing a monster but with the darkness and fog surrounding you I argue it makes the game slightly more panic inducing since you know that something is there but have no idea where it will come from or where it even is, making some corners in the anticipation of what's behind them a little daunting with your limited health. The radio in some rooms will freak out once you enter, making you think, oh my god, there's an enemy there, get away, get away, but then turning the camera around then reveals there isn't anything except a... Dark, squeaky toy ghost, alright. Then you'll experience moments like this. And no joke, nothing else happens. It's just a moment of unsettling ambience, and the fact that similar things happen later in the game but then it actually follows up with something makes it toy with your expectations even more. <laughs> Whoa, check it out, it's my favourite superhero of all time! Super Tuesday! Super Tuesday's quite a guy, he is here to save the day, cause he... And in the school in particular, once you figure out the order of events you need to solve and use items on other items to collect medallions to open the clock tower, you go through the doors of the tower, only to then end up exactly where you were before but not quite the same. And this is what makes Silent Hill so special and what makes it stand out against other survival horrors of the time, this hell world and fog world system. It's similar to what you experienced at the start of the game, but now a lot worse since you actually have to explore and stay alive in it. The environment now looks 10 times more threatening and the sound design turns from eerie to awful with metal grates under your feet and rusty gear grinding all around you. But where the game starts fucking with you is when you realize the layout is basically the same as where you just came from, but now with psychologically warped differences. You'll go through the girl's bathroom door in this world, only to then come out of the door again an entire one story above where you were a second ago. Gruesome pictures in the fog world are now manifested into real physical things. Staircases and creatures appear where they weren't before, and in my favourite transition to the hell world, in the hospital, you have to specifically go to the basement elevator once you turn on the generator and discover that there's now a fourth secret floor that isn't accessible from any other elevator. Jump scares as a whole are rare in Silent Hill, but when they do happen they totally catch you off guard completely off camera, and often represent a shift in the world around you, and since you have no idea what the hell to expect with this truly fucked up transitioning, it makes whatever is behind the door you heard the noise coming from even more of a mystery. Anything could happen. Or the noise could be something hidden in the room that you're in, you just don't know. 
What's this? <laughs> it's a hole, Harry. Harry! Hi, Sybil. What's this? It's a hole, Sybil. Come on, guys, it isn't that difficult. Hang on, wait a second. You're a cop with a gun and trained to deal with this kind of stuff. Why didn't you come with me from the start of the game? The main thing to note, though, is how the game does toy with you, seeing as you think you know the layout and what to expect, and then BAM! There's a tentacle monster in this version of that same room you were in earlier, and oops, you're dead now. In one of the game's highlights for me, in the school again, you're exploring in the fog world only to find a locker room with something shaking in the distance. You examine the locker that's shaking, and a cat jumps out, only for the cat to then be devoured out of the room. Then you finish off here, head outside, and discover that there are more enemies there. But once you enter the Hell World version of this, the same kind of situation happens again, but what really happens this time, well, I think it's better if I just show you. Reality is literally falling apart all around you and stewing that together with the extremely strange characters and occultist plot that I won't go into specific details about today creates suspense and unease constantly. If you thought Resident Evil was a little bit too cliche, then you can turn your head to Silent Hill and lose yourself to its unique world of darkness. Darkness. And it just gets more insane from there. From the hospital onwards especially, it gets way more intense with faster enemies able to hit you harder, wiggly brain things growing from their backs, and more aggressive noises happening all around you that make you feel the visuals from the school hell world onwards also get more disturbing and awesome and yes I do know about the references to kindergarten cop which is easily the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen in a horror game so if you're about to write something in the comments you can just fuck off and Shut up! but I'm not gonna be talking about those odd choices of references for as disturbing as they are. I mean just the visuals generally. The snow falling and actually landing and melting all around you was a fantastic touch to start the game off with, but once the hell world rolls around, well, everything is rotting and decrepit. The atmosphere of abandoned and empty halls is captured flawlessly. Light and darkness is used to amazing effect despite the limitations of the PS1, and it also helps to mask some of the more fucked up and unexplainable enemies later on in the game, so you can't even really make out what's attacking you anymore. It's so good at making you feel like you're invading these creatures homes. This is just normal for them and you don't feel welcome. Camera movements are fixed but follow you surprisingly well and may be incredibly helpful with giving you indications on where to go next in the open town area, but can be as much your enemy as well like the fixed camera in Resident Evil since it can hide monsters around corners and off camera really well and like at the star have those moments of really tripping you out. But these things can be sorted out by holding L2 and flipping the camera directly behind your head so you can have more direct control of what you see in front of you and what in each room obscured by the looming darkness. The character models themselves, well, I mean, they're all right for the time, I guess, but nowadays they can look a little bit... Must be on drugs. Must be on drugs. Must be on drugs. And if that face didn't fuck you up, the music might do it. Unfortunately, the copyright for this soundtrack, for whatever reason, is strangely strict on YouTube, so I can't play you long clips. But I hope that with this small montage, you can get the idea of how truly masterful and terrifying this soundtrack can be. Silent Hill would not be the same game without its metallic, harsh, industrial noises culminating into musical accompaniment of pure, unadulterated dread, composed and performed masterfully by the guitarist Akira Yamaoka. In fact, Silent Hill couldn't be a more inaccurate title even if it tried. This is the loudest hill I've ever been to and I've been to some fucking loud hills. The game knows exactly when to use music, when to stay quiet, when to be emotional and sympathetic like in this classic sequence. And whenever it wants to add a sense of tension, build up or apprehension for what's about to come next, it slowly seeps into the ghastly wind noises, drills into your brain and messes you up. In this room, for instance, near the end of the game, I actually wanted to get in and out because of how nasty and discomforting the music was. I felt so unnerved in this room that I solved the puzzles ridiculously quickly and tried to get in and out. As soon as possible. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I have read somewhere that some of the tracks in the game were made possible with manipulated dentist drills. That's the kind of soundtrack we're looking at here. Harry, what do you mean? 
the dryer isn't useful. I think it would be very useful because I just pissed myself. I personally think that the resi mechanics Silent Hill lacks are also made up for in spades by the puzzles in the game. The puzzles in Resident Evil were honestly a pretty pants, way too easy and way too obvious, but a nice change of pace from the rest of the game. Here though, these are flat out riddles that rely on tons of different methods of solving that I will not spoil for any of you that want to try the game out. There's a puzzle that gives you a poem about birds which you then have to translate into piano keys and some of those keys are broken. A puzzle involving star signs and numbers and with no clues you have to figure out what the relation and pattern between each of them is. A puzzle which requires a specific item to be used on specific things because of a hint to do with light and then you have to translate those patterns into combinations on switches and more. I mean there aren't that many puzzles in the game but they really do stand out and they're unforgettable because of that. And they aren't the hardest puzzles in the world but for a PS1 survival horror game this has got some good brain teasers in it and it makes you feel even more helpless and lost in this other world. And I don't know if you can see this exactly but these are the notes I took during my playthrough of about five hours or so of the original Silent Hill. I mean like it's really cool just to be able to get a pen and paper and make notes on puzzles from a PS1 game in a horror game. I, I thought that was really cool. There's even an enemy you need to fight on a rooftop and the only way to know how to beat it is by reading an unrelated fairy tale book in another room that gives you a clue about what to do and you need to remember that for this moment, which can easily be forgotten so you have to pay attention. It's so cool. But hey, this video can't go on forever, right? So let's finish this off for good. After many twists and turns about what happened to Cheryl and what everyone's beef is in this town, we end up at the amusement park where we fight a possessed Sybil. And don't go blasting me by mistake. Uh-oh! Well, I mean, you can save her if you have the right item, but... Uh... I didn't. And if you have to fight her here, Christ, she is tough. She takes way too many bullets for a person and her damage output is so high that she can shoot you once, hit you once, and end your game. And after death, after death, after death, I managed to find a good strategy of waiting for her to run out of ammo and then constantly walk backwards and fill her full of lead. Well, this is a lot fucking easier. After that, we have one last trek through the hell world, and I must be honest, trying to solve the puzzles and stay alive in the dark with no map at all is pretty stressful and a great climax to the game, which is then totally ruined by the final boss. Whichever ending you get, it's pathetic. Spoilers, by the way. Don't say I didn't warn you. Because you have to get ready for an epic battle against a god breaking through realities to end all suffering and enact revenge on the entire world. And you know what? For a god, you don't put up any kind of fucking fight. And then after this, we get the most shitty and abrupt ending I've ever seen. Thank you, Daddy. Goodbye. This can't be happening. Cheryl? I mean, I can only blame myself because it was one of the versions of the bad ending, but man, could they have made that any less heartfelt? Goodbye. Goodbye! I mean, I know it's just as abrupt and even more ridiculous, but I much rather would have gone with the UFO ending over this. Have you seen a little girl around here? And for that ending alone, Silent Hill gets the salvage today. That's lovely. And in conclusion... Silent Hill ends unbelievably abruptly and it's definitely a Christmas game. Ding dong, Silent Hill is here. The deathly screams are ringing. Dogs will bite you off the rear. The wheelchair wheels are spinning. Thanks so much for watching this video on Silent Hill, everybody. Yes, it's been a long time coming, I know. And special thanks to all the names on the screen right now that went into the description below and looked at the Patreon page to support this channel during YouTube's darkest times. You have no idea how much you're helping, so thank you so much. And special thanks to the top tier supporters that you can find out how to get yourself if you look in the description below. Omarma2, Patrick Ferguson, Basil, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Tiago Pereira, so sorry if I pronounced that wrong, man, A.D. Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxius, Kane Stewart, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much again.